in other words, is Portland's nonprofit feminist bookstore. Just by a show of hands, would you mind telling me if this is your first time here? Do you mean at this location? At this location, oh. yes. Okay. Now you know where it is. I expect to see you again. We just moved here to this beautiful old building on the corner of Killingsworth and Williams. This is the space we inhabit. In other words, bookstore is not just uh, a bookstore, obviously, that sells feminist books, books about women, by women, but it's also a community space. Something is happening here every day. Every Yoga, non-sexist children reading hour, queer polyamory discussion group. Um, remember that um, we take dollar donations or a dollar or a quarter, and they call it penny, whatever, to help in other words, because they're just letting us have this space for nothing, we'll figure. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. So, yeah. The third thing the bookstore does is serve as a resource center to help connect people to the resources that exist in Portland. In other words, Women's Books and Resources was founded in 1993 by three women's reproductive rights activists, filling the void left behind by the previous feminist bookstore closing. In other words, open its doors on Hawthorne in what became prime real estate. But ultimately, the rent became too high. And in other words, as a feminist organization, had to make a choice to move or die. This beautiful building is owned by the Albina Women's League, and the Albina Women's League is a nonprofit, and they ran the Albina Arts Center. That's what this building was. I, like so many people, have passed that building many times in, over the past 15 years, and we kind of bemoan the fact that it was boarded up. And we remember the days of the Albana Arts Center as being a very uh, full of life place that was the one place in the community where you could come and you could take painting classes, you can take dance classes, there was music going all the time. It was a place for young people to go particularly and to, it was the live performance place in, in Northeast Portland. Funding dried up in the 80s and basically to the best of my knowledge from 1984 to 2006 this building sat unused. We are the property owners of this building. At uh, one time the building was the Albina Art Center and we subsequently came in and took over part of their programming and added our own. It's um, disconcerting to see all of the old neighbors, a lot of the African-American nonprofits who owned property, none of whom own property anymore. And I wanted to see some of our organizations be able to make the transition. Um, we caught wind of that and called them and had a series of discussions about what, how it could work between us. Almost everybody that we met that was associated with, in other words, was very sensitive to be helpful to those organizations that remained. And I thought that it made them a perfect tenant for the league. When we finally got permission from the Albina Women's League to utilize the building, one of the bargains was that we would help them clean it out. The most heartwarming thing was how many people came out and worked tirelessly just to get this place beautiful. Compared to what it was, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure there are black people who walk by the bookstore and, you know, see this as just part of everything else that's going on in the neighborhood. Um, because all the businesses that have come in are white. Some people did have the impression that since it was the Albina Arts Center, which was primarily an African-American um, organization, they felt that um, it should kind of stay that way. In other words, Bookstore moved into a neighborhood that is being gentrified. So the question of whether or not it participates in gentrification, absolutely it does. You can't separate that from the larger kind of social economic uh, forces that are happening. 
that's like saying, do you think that white people benefit from racism even if they're not personally racist? Absolutely. I believe the African Americans don't make up, I just recently checked, one point six percent of the population of the state of Oregon and something along the lines of 6.9 percent of the population of Portland. Being a minority, we had a community here that we could at least come to and call home. So working class people are being pushed out of the neighborhood while middle class and, and, upper, middle, uh, and upper class folks are moving in. There's a racial dynamic to that. It's mostly people of color moving out and white folks moving in and the whole social character of the neighborhood is changing. Well, we're gentrifying. Um, I would define gentrification being that you're bringing it, you know, you're, you're changing the economic playing field. Some of what people are calling gentrification, if you want to revitalize a community, is absolutely necessary. You, you can't have the playing field where it was and improve the climate of, the economic climate of a neighborhood I don't think the bad guy is necessarily a nonprofit feminist bookstore, but yes, it does benefit from these larger trends. What I think is hard for me sometimes is having spent 11 years working with um, girls who are from this neighborhood and whose grandmothers moved to this neighborhood when they were in their 20s and watching most of them be forced out of the neighborhood. I think it's hard to see who the new people are that are moving in that not intentionally but you know because that's the way life is are in some ways taking the very homes that girls I worked with lived in. The question of am I part of the problem is one that I must always ask myself and I am part of the problem. I'm also part of the solution. These guys own a building so they have wealth in the building and they're an African-American organization that has a long history in this community and um, as we continue to, to revamp this building that's that creates an opportunity for them to again do good things. I, I really believe that the work that the Albina Women's League did out of the Albina Arts Center 20 and 30 and 40 years ago enables us to do the work that we're doing right here if only because we're in the building that they own but more so because I think that they are, are and were an active organization for social change and in a lot of ways were doing some of those same things. What I felt when I went into the Avon Arts Center in terms of the energy was, you know, traces of the energy because the building and, and the walls and the floor and all those things, the atmosphere mixed with a new energy. I think that's really kind of um, emblematic of what's happening in our community. You have the old energy and you have the new energy. And so the question and the challenge that we face in Northeast Portland is that how do you marry those energies? How do you make those work and create a new community? One of the things I'm hoping to do is to really diversify the bookstore. I think it becomes more pressing that it's in this neighborhood, that it actually has significantly more leadership by women of color. In terms of our board and our, I believe our volunteer base has not been as diverse as we wanted. This is going to be our next push. You know, if, you, if you're a person of color and you're walking in and the music is not familiar to you or nobody speaks to you when you walk in is, is you know, an experience that you have. You know, people are looking for people who look like them, for places that feel like them, or feel like, hey, I want to be like that. And so I think that until there's been an opportunity for women of color to define that, to shape that, create that in the bookstore, then and only then will it really be a bookstore that's been mutually defined and mutually shaped and mutually created to then serve multiple communities.